Hello everybody, Ignatius Sell Jackson CPA here with another video for you um, regarding the P Paycheck Protection Program Forgiveness. So I wanted to touch base with uh, some of my clients and other interested parties on uh, what the forgiveness looks like from the Paycheck Protection Program. I've had several of my clients who have actually received the funds now. And so I just wanted to kind of do a video to explain what some of those key provisions are to make sure that you qualify for forgiveness. I keep in mind, this is only information that we know of as of right now. There still has not been any clear guidance issued by the SBA regarding um, some specifics on how they're going to apply certain provisions of the forgiveness requirements of the CARES Act. Um, that said, um, plan on uh, having some updates to this um, in the next week or two. I'm hoping that they issue this guidance very soon. Uh, there's a lot of businesses that are almost halfway through, if not a little bit more than that, their eight week time period to get the forgiveness and they still don't have clear guidance on what the process is going to look like to get that taken care of. And so we need like an application from the SBA, we need thorough guidance. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we need to be able to know and understand what's going to be necessary um, with this program forgiveness. So hopefully we can get that soon. But for now, I wanted to just give you some information on what I know as of now. Okay. So um, by the way, there's still money available as, as of uh, last night, I believe there was still money available. Um, so if you are wanting to get this loan, um, which you may not want to after I go through some of the stuff in this video, but uh, if you wanted to get the loan, um, then you potentially could still get it. I definitely recommend going to a community bank, a smaller community bank or something like that, because the big banks are being restricted on how many applications they can put in per day. And they probably already have enough in their queue to basically last them until the funds are dried up. So um, definitely work with a smaller community bank um, and uh, see if they can help you out with this, okay? Um, so the amount of forgiveness, um, I've talked about this before, is based on an eight-week time period. That eight-week time period starts the day you receive the funds. So you take the date you receive the funds, um, go ahead and add um, eight times seven, which is 56 days to that time period and that will be your date that you would need to spend the money during in order to qualify for forgiveness. So um, ultimately what that means is um, you would need to have your payroll costs incurred during that time period and paid out to those employees. Um, you have to pay your utilities and all that kind of stuff that is eligible to be paid for. So in order to receive the full forgiveness at this point, um, the SBA is requiring that you spend the month 75% of the funds that you receive on payroll costs. Now payroll costs are kind of broad. They're not just what you pay the employees as their salary. It's also the group health benefits, obviously their wages and salaries, vacation leave, parental leave, family leave, sick leave, retirement benefits, state and local taxes um, that are assessed on the compensation of the employees. So um, it does have a broad definition, basically all the same things that you were able to include in your loan application to get the funds are the same things you can include during this eight week time period. But again, it's very important to know that it's what you pay out, okay? You have to both incur it and pay it out. So, which means you kind of have that liability the employee has provided the service or they're basically owed for that time period and you're paying out what is owed to them. So um, there's definitely some ways to make sure that we get to that point, but definitely work with somebody to make sure you get there, okay? Um, now there are some people that are saying that it's going to be a cliff uh, version to determine forgiveness meaning if you don't reach 75% of the loan amount that you received in payroll costs, you don't get anything. I don't think that's gonna be the way it will be done. There'll be a lot of unhappy people if that's the case. So I think the way ultimately it's gonna be is a prorated version. So meaning if you, let's say you got $100,000 for this loan, you only spent $65,000 of it on payroll costs, that would mean the most you could have forgiven is $86,666. Okay, 
and then the rest of it uh, would have to be paid back over that two year time period. So I definitely at the 1% interest rate. So I definitely think that's what's gonna ultimately end up happening. I can't imagine they're gonna basically say if you don't spend the 75% of the full amount on payroll costs that it's gonna be denied 100%. I think that's crazy. But there are definitely some people out there who have mentioned it. And so I just wanted to um, make, and it hasn't been made very clear by the SBA yet on whether they're gonna do that or not. So just wanted to let you know that that is a potentiality. Um, now there is a bill or there's some, I shouldn't say a bill, but there's some things going through Congress um, where they're actually potentially considering reducing that threshold by 50%. So I think they're currently just asking the Treasury and the SBA to reconsider that. However, if they don't, I think they could very well do some legislation that actually uh, forces them to change it um, because a lot of businesses are gonna struggle to reach that 75% threshold, um, especially sole proprietorships, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, similar to when you applied for the, benef for the loan, wages and salaries are going to be capped at $100,000 for any individual employee. When I say $100,000, that's the rate of $100,000. So you take the, the their usual salary, you divide that by 52 weeks, you multiply that times eight. Um, if the rate of salary for that is more than $100,000 um, for on an annual basis, then you have to basically reduce it to cap it at that $100,000 amount. So um, your, your accountant or your uh, tax advisor can definitely help you out and figure that out if that's the case. Um, now that's only for the salary, the cash compensation component. That does not include um, the retirement benefits or any other employer contributions to health insurance or anything like that. It's only for the cash portion of the payout. So just keep that in mind. Payroll costs also exclude the employer portion of federal taxes, so like your Social Security, Medicare, uh, and FUTA taxes. So it, it excludes the employer portion of any payroll taxes. But again, it does include the state portion of employer taxes, which is state unemployment insurance. And it's also important to note that if you have any employees who have signed up for the families, or not signed up, but taking advantage of the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, where you're paying them for paid sick leave or paid family leave, those employees' wages do not count towards your forgiveness calculation. So you have to exclude those from that calculation. So be careful when you're going through and doing the process to make sure you exclude those. Um, again, which makes sense. I mean, it's, it would be double dipping. You already got a, a tax credit for those wages. So why would you also get credit for the forgiveness portion for the same wages? So just it's kind of conceptually just makes sense. Um, in addition to payroll costs, you also can take um, your utilities, your mortgage interest payments, if you have a mortgage within the business, your rent and any other interests, I shouldn't say any other, but interest on certain other obligations that were in existence by February 15th of 2020. So if there's been any changes to those since then that has increased the rate of uh, your rent or um, anything like that for the utilities, unfortunately you are capped at what you were paying previously. So it'd have to be something that was in place as of February 15th, 2020 already. Um, and all this, obviously keep in mind those that are limited to 25% of the loan amount. So for sole proprietors, uh, keep in mind that it's it, your loan was based off your net earnings from self-employment and the forgiveness will also be based off of that. So for the forgiveness, you basically take the net earnings from self-employment for 2019, divide that by 52, multiply it by eight, and that would get you your forgivable amount for the sole, for the sole proprietor. So unfortunately, if you do the math on that by definition or by mathematical uh, impossibility, you cannot reach 75% of the loan amount as um, payroll cost if it's just you by yourself. 
Um, if you have other employees, you certainly can still reach that, but if it's just you by yourself and you're just doing uh, your, set, your earnings from last year divided by 52 times eight, um, you're under the 75% amount. So there's basically no way for a sole proprietor that has no employees to fully qualify for forgiveness unless the SBA reduces that threshold um, from 75% or gives them some kind of reprieve. So hopefully they do that. Um, you also, as a sole proprietor, are able to take your rent and utilities and mortgage interest payments, um, but only to the extent you were eligible to take a deduction for those during 2019's tax return. So if you included on the 2019 tax return that you used to apply for the loan um, and you st are still incurring those expenses in 2020, then you can go ahead and utilize that. But if for some reason you did not include it on your 2019 return, unfortunately you can't take that deduction. So unfortunately you will not get to the full forgiveness if it's just yourself again. So sole proprietors are definitely potentially going to get the short end of the stick on this, but uh, uh, kind of stay tuned and we'll see if they kind of come up with some things to help you guys out some more but you may end up having to pay some of it back unfortunately in addition to these other items uh, the loan also has a reduction to your forgiveness if you decrease your number of full-time equivalents or if you decrease the rate of pay for your employees that you bring back. So what that means is if you had 10 employees, 10 full-time equivalents during the time period that they want you to look at, and you now have uh, half of that, then you're basically gonna get whatever amount that you determined you were eligible for, you would only get half of that. In essence, is how I believe it's going to work. We're still waiting on some additional guidance on this particular topic to make sure the calculations are done right but as of now that's how we're thinking that's going to be done and so uh, very important to note that you you want to kind of look at that and make sure that you are able to do that if you want the full forgiveness um to, to determine the full-time equivalents you look at the average per month during one of two periods and this is your choice you can pick which period you want to use so it's either going to be during the period of february 15th of 2019 through June 30th of 2019, or from January 1st of 2020 through February 29th of 2020. And again, you're gonna try, you're gonna determine the average per month during those time periods. Whatever the average per month during those time periods are, um, you, you would obviously want to pick whatever's the lowest. So whichever one's more favorable to you, that's what you would want to elect to use. If you're a seasonal employer though, and you applied for the loan as a seasonal employer, you can only use February 15th, 2019 through June 30th, 2019. So for the reduction in pay, it's a different time period though. So the time periods I just explained were for the full-time equivalents for the reduction in pay. It's also um, going to be for the previous quarter, the amount that you were paying them during the previous quarter, you would have to keep at least that amount or more. I mean, you can definitely pay them more if you wanted to, but you have to at least keep it at that amount. So and for most people who are getting these loans, that's going to be Q1 2020. So whatever you were paying them during Q1 2020, you would have to go through and make sure you're still paying them that uh, during the eight week time period. Um, they did put into the law a special exception. So if you get back to the full-time equivalent or salary levels, uh, so in terms of the rate of pay for you're paying your employees by June 30th of 2020, then you will not be, uh, you will not get any of your forgiveness reduced. So as long as you can get back to that point by June 30th, so let's say you get to the eight, end of the eight week time period, and you're not there as you would want to wait to apply for the forgiveness and hopefully you can get to that point by june 30th once you reach that point on june 30th then by june 30th excuse me then you would go ahead and submit your application for forgiveness at that point 
and you should still qualify for the full amount in that situation. So just keep that in mind. There is a special exception in there, but uh, it might just delay how quickly you apply for the forgiveness. So to help you out as well, um, the SBA has came out and said that if you make an offer to hire an employee and they deny coming back or they refuse to come back for whatever reason, because they're getting more unemployment or because they're too afraid to come back to work because of the coronavirus, um, they don't have anyone to watch their kids, whatever the case might be. Um, they're basically saying that if they refuse to come back to work, you will not be deemed for that on your forgiveness application. So, but to make sure you document that, make sure you make a written offer and best if you could have the employee sign it. If the employee doesn't want to sign it for some reason, just make sure that you send it uh, through email and also through like certified mail to their address, their home address, just to make sure that there's proof that it was delivered to them and they basically just denied coming back. Okay, so I would, I would make sure you get that done. Um, that said, I'm of the opinion, and I believe the SBA and their FAQ had the same opinion, that if you make an offer to an employee, they basically have made themselves ineligible for unemployment if they deny to come back. Um, because you're, as long as the offer is restoring them to the same level that they had previously, obviously, which it, if you want forgiveness, you basically have to do that anyways. So um, just keep that in mind with your employees. I mean, and they, not to mention, if they don't come back, you're going to go find somebody else to replace their job. So when they do want to come back, there's not going to be a job for them in theory, right? And so I would think after you kind of explain those two things to your employees, they should come back and, and come to work for you. But I, I got to tell you, there was some rumors going around before um, and some other issues that employees were being very upset with their employers for, you know, <laughs> bringing them back to work for these loans and things like that. But unfortunately, if you got the loan, there's really no choice in the matter. I mean, if you want to get the full forgiveness, you essentially will need to do that. So um, just kind of keep that in mind that that might be a little bit of a headache for you um, to go through that process. But um, it is something you do need to do. Um, when you go to apply for forgiveness, you're going to have to provide documentation to the bank um, proving that how you spent the money, that you spent it on qualified expenses, etc., etc. So some of the things we think they're going to ask for are going to be payroll records, cancel checks, receipts um, for the payments on rent, mortgage, and debt obligations, that kind of stuff, utilities. Um, they might ask for the bills from the utility companies as well to verify the time period is during the period of the eight weeks. So just kind of keep all that stuff in mind. Um, the lender then has 60 days to make a decision and submit that to the SBA for approval once you apply for the forgiveness. So now on to a, uh, that's really it in terms of um, the process to apply for the forgiveness that we know of right now. Um, again, I think there's going to be applications and some other things that come out that will ultimately um, change some of that potentially and hopefully make it a little easier to understand and to go through and do. But uh, for now, that's the best we have. And that's just based off of the actual uh, CARES Act language and things of that nature. And a couple items that the SBA has given us. So, One unfortunate thing is the IRS last week came out and essentially said exactly the opposite of what I believe Congress intended. That although the loan forgiveness is not includable in income, based on the tax law, the expenses are also not deductible. Now, this is a huge blow to a lot of businesses because a lot of small businesses were expecting that they would not have to pay this back and they would not get taxed on it. Um, and so they, the, this is basically the government trying to screw some small businesses out of the benefits of this program. And especially if you're paying people that are sitting at home, 
this is absolutely asinine that they're going through and trying to say this. It's definitely not what I believe Congress intended. And I also just do not believe that this is going to be beneficial to business owners long term. And in fact, it might have the detriment effect of having businesses still potentially shut down because now they may not be able to pay their tax bill. So it's just kind of silly that they're trying to do this. Um, while technically they might be correct under the, the rules of the tax law, it's definitely not what Congress intended. So chances are there's gonna be a bill. I think I may have saw something about one being floated around this morning that is going to basically fix that and force the IRS to reverse their position. They're gonna write it in there that the expenses are also not, uh, that the expenses are also deductible to where essentially this is a grant, a tax-free grant that does not have to be included in income and you still get to take the deduction for the expenses. So um, hopefully that, that comes through and that gets finalized because otherwise, I gotta tell you, I probably wouldn't have advised some of my clients to take these loans because ultimately it, it means they're paying money back. They're paying money to employees who are not really doing anything to benefit their business. They're not earning any revenue. So they're basically paying taxes, right, on money that hasn't really, in essence, earned them any money, any real revenue. Um, and it, it can have a very, very detrimental effect. So I don't agree with it. Um, I'm adamantly against it. And I, I hope that Congress can actually fix that since the IRS and the Treasury Secretary seem unwilling to change their position on it. Um, I mean, it, yeah, it, it all, in a sense, it almost would have been better just for employers to let their employees just be on unemployment, um, because it would have been less headaches for them. Um, they would have not had to pay people just to sit at home potentially. I mean, yeah, it's just all around a, a bad situation for all employers involved. Um, so hopefully they do change it. Um, but to kind of give you some perspective on it. Um, let's say you've got a $200,000 loan that was forgiven and let's say you're in the 35% tax bracket. Okay. Um, your tax taxes for the year would increase by like $70,000 in that situation, which is why it's, it's crazy to me that they're, that they're doing this because, you know, you're paying people to sit at home and do nothing for you. And you got a $70,000 tax bill that's gonna to come to you. So I, I hope they do change it. Um, otherwise, it might be smart, honestly, to potentially just not take the forgiveness and just pay back the loan over two years at a 1% interest rate, not pay your employees until they're actually able to come back and make you revenue. Um, and now you're, you know, getting more of a benefit from it because you got revenue coming in and you're paying employees with the loan. Um, and you're able, you're able to actually, I, I, in my opinion, benefit your business better. So there's definitely some other things that are going to come from that. Um, we'll have to see where things shake out with, uh, Congress. Hopefully they do fix it, but, uh, we'll see. Um, obviously, keep in mind that any amounts that are not forgiven do have to be repaid. So it's a 1% loan though. So in essence, it's up to you whether you want to just pay it back uh, once you find out that you didn't qualify for full forgiveness. Or you can pay it back over the, the remaining two year of the two year time period um, at the 1% interest rate. So I mean, it, kind of up to you as a business decision what you want to do. Um, if you have other debt out there that's got a higher rate, I would, I mean, in that situation, it might make sense to go ahead and do that and just leave it outstanding and pay back over time. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's it just kind of have to play by ear and we'll, over time, we'll, we'll get to the point where we have more information that can kind of guide you better. You do need to make sure that you still go ahead and spend the money though. 
even if you don't plan on doing the forgiveness and applying for that, you do still have to spend it only on payroll costs, utilities, rent, mortgage interest payments, and all the other eligible expenses that were noted in the loan. Reason being, you certified that you would only spend it on those items. So if you don't do that and they somehow find out that you spent it on something else, that's considered fraud and they could definitely penalize you. Um, I just saw it yesterday, I think, was the first case of fraud related to this program where people were, um, somebody was applying for the loan, I think, and um, they didn't actually have a business or if they did, they didn't have employees or something to that extent. So very interesting, all, all the things that are come out from this, but it does look like they are going to come after people who are trying to take advantage of the system. So I just my word of caution, just be careful with that. Um, and obviously work with your CPA or accountant or other advisor that is familiar with all these regulations and rules from this CARES Act. I mean, nobody knows 100% for sure how everything's gonna play out, but you, know, you wanna be with somebody who's been kind of keeping up to date on everything um, and understands what's going on and can help you through the process. So um, definitely keep all that in mind as you're going through this. Um, to work with your accountant and your CPA. Don't just rely on what the banker tells you. Don't rely on what the bank tells you. The banks don't know. The people at the banks are, uh, they're not tax people, okay? And they're not uh, fi truly financial advisors that will understand these bills and these provisions. They're not used to reading tax code and all this other stuff. So definitely work with someone who is in that space and understands that. Um, and you should always get a, a second opinion before you are going in to apply for the forgiveness, in my opinion, because you want to make sure that the calculations are done right, that you get the full amount, and that the bank doesn't try to screw you over. So, and I've, as a reminder, just keep in mind also, there's a lot of things that are changing in this space. We still are waiting for guidance. So definitely um, check back. Um, I'll definitely post video updates. Um, and some email correspondence to my clients as well as things progress. But uh, for the time being, this is what we know. This is how that calculation is going to be done. And I uh, hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video um, or shoot us an email or give us a call. Um, we'll get back to you as soon as we can and uh, we'll try to answer whatever we can um, based on the information we have. So. Hope everybody has a good day. Um, it's been a pleasure, and we'll talk to you later.